We ready? Yep. Justin, you ready? <laughs> Justin is not here. Justin is on his six year anniversary with Clara. Yeah. I love their outdoor adventures, man. Oh, they're vibing. They're just like the most well dressed yeah. couple out in the woods. Yeah. They got a cool little spot. Creating out there. content. New York. Hey, well, let's go. In case you missed it, episode mm-hmm. number 14, my son and I, let's go. Let's get it. Juju? Hey, can't be mad at Juju. Ooh, oops. Mm. Juju Bar, Newport Boulevard. My name is Kevin Sturdivant. Eli Sturdivant. Let's AKA get it. AKA Kevion. AKA mm-hmm. my son. Mm-hmm. So, it's busy. It is busy. 11.47, October 30th, mm-hmm. the day before Halloween. Yep. My goodness. Uh, where do we begin? Start with deals? Start we got some deals. good deals. We had some great deals happen. Mm-hmm. Steven and I recently closed a deal in the Flower Streets. Here's what's crazy about this deal, right? So a couple months ago, I sold a home. Uh, one, one away from PCH, Brandon Architects, really well done. I forgot the square footage on that, but I know it was not as big as this. Yep. We closed at 8.3. This property on Larkspur has a crazy rooftop, literally like one home, one or two homes away from Ocean Ave, which is like, that's the road to be on, right? Mm-hmm. 25, 30 million dollar homes right there. Yeah. Um, this home was originally listed for 8.995, and I got a text from the listing agent, which She's an incredible agent, mm-hmm. and she's like, look, there is a deal to be made here. This is what buyers need to understand right now. There are deals to be made, and yeah. if you're connected, if your ears to the ground, you're going to hear some things, and so I got that insight from this agent. She's like, there's a deal to be made here. There's a lot of sellers who are like, hey, I get it. 12-year high. Yeah. Let's get what I can get, and right now. And um, I think they dropped the price down to seven nine nine five. They dropped it like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. I think maybe they dropped it a little bit more than that. Anyways, we closed the deal at seven point one, almost two million dollars off of the price it was listed for um, in in April of yeah. this year. So it's worth it to have a good buyer's agent. Turns out it's worth it to be a serious buyer right now. If you yep. and if you have a buyer's agent that's helping you be aware of deals, remember what is stalling the market right now. The fact that interest rates are two percent more than normal. What's normal? Five and a half, six and a half. Where mm-hmm. is it now? In the eights. Can you change your purchase price? Nope. Not unless you do a short sale. Um, you can't change your purchase price. Mm-hmm. You know, you buy a home for two million bucks. That's your purchase price forever. Forever. Can you change your interest rate when the rates change? Yes. Yep. That's why they say. And you can't Date change rate, your house. Home. You can't change your house unless you move. So yeah. So it's a special um, house, and it's your interest rates high, and it's a crazy good price. Yeah. Jump on it. Yeah, and vice versa. Then there's crazy <laughs> deals that are happening with serious motivated sellers. We mm-hmm. recently closed a deal in the Heights on Catalina at $1,430 per square foot. That is a very high dollar per square foot. It was 3636 per square, uh, 36, 36 square feet. Mm-hmm. We closed the deal at 5.2 million. This is a great example wow. of a serious buyer who is not playing around, right? Mm-hmm. There was another home that our buyer could have bought literally like probably a hundred, maybe two hundred thousand dollars less. Mm-hmm. That was newer, a thousand more square feet on the home, uh, and a thousand square feet bigger on the lot. My se- the, the the seller, I did not represent the seller. They came up right. Why did they come up? Because their home was a true art piece. Yeah, and we brought forth a buyer who was killing it. Young, super successful, didn't care that she could have bought a bigger, newer home um, for a lower price. Yeah. She wanted what she wanted. And so on both sides of the spectrum, if you're a buyer, there's great opportunities. And if you're sell- if you're a seller um, that knows how to style their home, you can majorly come up. Yep. Yeah. yeah. People are making a lot of money when it comes to design in Orange Heck County right yeah. now. 
somebody that's going to make a lot of money, um, Lord willing. We just listed an incredible home in, I think, what is definitely one of my favorite pockets in all of Laguna Beach, Woods Cove. Ooh. This is like this is like the little zone where where true OGs will tell you Warhol was hanging out in this yeah. little artist colony here. Yeah, that's cool. Woods Cove is just special. If you're familiar with Woods Cove, um, it's a really awesome pocket just past the village in Laguna Beach. So heart of the village is like Thalia, Anita, Oak Street. And as you continue going south uh, on the mountain side of, of PCH and I guess part of the ocean side is Woods Cove, mm -hmm. really special zone. We have one of the first homes um, at the at kind of the, the start of his career, Chris Letourneau, as he was building a name. Chris Letourneau has turned into just extraordinary icon these days. But this was some of the earlier work of Chris Letourneau, some of his like earlier signs of greatness. Yeah. I didn't actually know this when I sold my friends this home here a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Anyways, they took it up to an even crazier notch and they might be considering selling. So it's about all I could say about that one for now. Just That's stay special. tuned to my IG at Kevion. Do not sleep. Some deals out there. You just got back from a trip. I got back last night. Man, how was it? <laughs> it was cool. Where I you like... were hanging out with Owen Wilson. <laughs> yeah, in Maui. Dang. Lives in Hawaii, bro. How was it out there? It it was it was kind of there's a lot going on. You know, this obviously the fires. I've got uh, I was visiting some family with Malia and because um, you guys were on a date there just like not that April. long ago wow. in Lahaina. So Lahaina is wow. where all the fires were, and so we got to go. Because what's your, like, your your people on your mom's side live there? Um, which your uncle, my uncle, my grandma, and my grandpa, Dang. and then his, my uncle's wife and daughter. So they Dang. live there. They're not living in Lahaina, but th a lot of business comes mm. from the tourism. How was his his business affected? I mean, I think for him, it's definitely rough because it's you lose a lot of the people that are coming in because yeah. it's a lot of tourism and right. his business. Like a lot of the people in Hawaii is tourism based right so he's definitely taking a hit to his business but it's cool to like visit um and they're rebuilding the locals it's a very strong community the, yeah. the local community there yeah so it was it was cool to see that people's attitude is still good but it's mm. definitely it's definitely a bummer like flying out you could flying over you could see it's just black oh it's gnarly yeah dang it's crazy that is super crazy mm-hmm Good trip though. It was fun. Yeah, we yeah. still got to like go to the beach. Heard you're going to Hawaii two times in the same month. Uh, two times the same month. Wow, yeah. lucky kid. Yep. <laughs> so, um, on that note, we if there's one place that I've gotten more love from in terms of the real estate community, everywhere I hear a lot of San Diego. San Diego. Mm -hmm. A lot of <laughs> San Diegans Diego. are like open case in San Diego. I get it a lot in the Bay. Um, I get it a fair amount in Florida. I would say San Diego is number two. Yeah. But number one, without a shadow of a doubt, has been Oahu. A lot of agents have reached out to me and said, if you ever come to Oahu, yeah. we'd love to meet, we'd love to talk. And I've talked to some other my of my friends out there, um, just like, why do you think that is? Why do you think we get so much insight from mm -hmm. Oahu? And I think when I when you look at kind of the industry um, of 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 the main brokerages, they're all the main larger institutions. Um, there aren't really any family owned independents out there. Yeah, I'm sure there true. are. I just haven't really seen them. You no, know, well, when I was in there's and when I, and I went to Maui, not Oahu, <clears throat> but you see, there's a good amount of homes that are coming for sale in Maui just for different reasons. Um, no small, I didn't right. see any small companies. Yeah, so it's yeah. all the larger companies, mm -hmm. right? It's your CVs. I think C21 yep. has a presence out there. Yep. Um, Compass, right? And so yeah. much love to all of those companies, just like we appreciate those companies here. But one thing I've learned as we began to figure out if we could actually put a positive dent in the market marketplace um, is that 
I think there's an opportunity for us to grow and impact agents and show them the way we move and the way we imp impact communities and market listings and prospect um, and do events that are relevant for us. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm meeting a bunch of agents in Oahu um, later this month. Well, I guess when this comes out, it'll be November. So yeah. if you're an agent in Oahu and you want to connect, I'm going to be out there around the week of Thanksgiving. Would love to wrap out. Would love to connect. I'm going to be doing a couple little meetups. So come through. Say what's up. Case Oahu. Stay tuned. I think, I think another thing about why you get a case gets a lot of attention and and desire from people in Oahu is is a few different things. One, obviously, we're family owned, yeah, and we have an incredible vibe of of community, which is really important in Hawaii. But also, when you think about it, and I was thinking about this for a while when I was there, is like the idea of land ownership mm. in Hawaii is is a big deal. Yeah, you know, whether it's people that don't live in Hawaii, maybe it's locals, maybe it's families, maybe there's a lot of businesses trying to buy up right. land. And there's a lot of unique product. Like yeah. people, it's not like there's a ton of homes being built. Right. And you see these like architecturally unique homes, these homes that are right in unique spots of of the beach where they have this crazy view right. no one else has. And so we market ourselves as someone that like has a lot of respect for like the design. And I think a lot of the islands are about respect. Yeah. And so like we have respect the architect where we like pay homage mm. to one particular designer. So I think we get a lot of attention and I think we're really called to go there be for that reason of like this idea of we're good at putting respect somewhere where it's yeah. needed. Yeah. The you know? architecture there is insane. Yeah. Like throughout the Diamond Airport Head and sick. Waikiki, it's like, dude, there is incredible mm -hmm. MCM architecture there. Like yeah. one of my favorite hotels. That how that hotel, the Surf Jack, was super influential Ooh. when we started to redo our home. Yeah, the Surf Jack. Um cool. and then just meeting great friends, like the whole like Eric Tanaguchi and his mm -hmm. whole group, and then meeting uh Kamohai. If you guys don't know these guys, they're amazing agents out there. So you know, looking to see. We don't we don't want to start too big and go too fast, but it is a goal of ours. I'll have my license there by the end of this year. Um, and it's just, you know, you got to give it a shot. You know, you don't know if you don't try. So I'm constantly looking for ways that I could inspire and influence and also challenge myself. And so why not? You know, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Why it, not give it, it a shot? It's not a bummer to be there while you're working. No. Either no, no, way, no. it's not like you're going to somewhere and it's hard to be there. So. No, Lord willing, we we live there uh, every summer mm -hmm. for the rest of our lives. I, I wouldn't mind. Um, so I plan to live there summer 2024. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. This is going to be a very exciting meeting. Stay tuned. Um, we got next door. We've been talking about next door. Yeah. The Sturdivant Think Tank. Can't um, wait. A really inspiring environment for the crew to get to work. Mm -hmm. um, so really excited about that. Construction has officially broken ground. I've just been paying monthly there for absolutely no reason. <laughs> so to to see real progress yeah. taking place there is pretty exciting. It's cool walking in there this morning because uh, literally uh, last week with nothing was there. Right. So like I, yeah. last time I saw it, um, I didn't. It was completely empty. Yeah. So like walls are up, insulations in, drywalls in. Yes. Um, it's pretty sick. Well, like we're to gonna need your soundproofing tactics because yep. while we aren't making music, um, we are, we are, we are making music. It's just yeah. in a different, a different kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it? What is the, your vision? Uh, obviously, you've talked to me a lot about like the vision behind the space it's for team start event yes or the start event group yep. which is our official name yeah i just want to so create a, a, a zone for our team to get locked in mm -hmm. you know it's really easy to get distracted mm -hmm. you know like that's why in this office i put these blinds in because i need to be able to be locked in yeah you know so i want everybody to have their own private office although we only have 12 people um on our immediate team i think there's a lot of room for growth yeah. so i've created 20 private offices that you guys myself we could totally go in there and just zone out and stay focused on our goals and so it's really these these uh think tanks if you will of an environment that's yours where you can always go in your stuff's always there mm -hmm. Um, whereas here we kind of have like an open WeWork kind of vibe. Yeah. You know, the crew has sold over half a billion dollars 
in real estate in the last two years. Mm -hmm. I think it's only fitting that we develop our own space. Yeah. So sure. um, I'm excited. Yes. Anybody that creates that 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 anybody that does 500 million in two years within case, I promise you, I will do the same thing for you and help you create um, your own space. Mm -hmm. We officially signed a, uh, some paperwork for case in Claremont. Ooh. That's super exciting. Sick. Um, so so Claremont, if you don't know, is the last city east of Los Angeles County. Mm -hmm. The mid-century architecture in Claremont. There's Neutras in Claremont. Yeah. It is such a beautiful city. So to create an HQ there, that will be official office number three. It's a good amount of the actual case study homes in Claremont. There's some there? stuff. There's some architecture out there. Yeah. And so um, we'll be building a squad out there. Reach out to us. We're looking to build an incredible team out there. Mm -hmm. um, case LA is going off. Yeah. Caesar, Courtney, Jay, those dudes are really doing an extraordinary job at um, leading the way. You know, and showing these guys what's possible. David Duong, everybody over there. I'm in LA every Tuesday. So if you're an agent and you want to connect or one of the friends, um, hit me up because yeah. I'm in LA every Tuesday looking at some of the dopest real estate on the planet. Yeah, I will say too, just I'm in the LA group chat and I'm not even part of the LA office, but like I'm getting pretty inspired. Like 2024, I would really like to step into a little bit of the LA you market should, man. because of how much awesome design is there. And I'm there often, anyways, just for music. And um, it's cool to see them like really, like since you started going there weekly, yeah. they're like, really pushing themselves to like knock on doors that are like beyond anything they've ever seen before well you know? and so i think that has a lot to do with the way my mindset has shifted a lot with my role here at case mm -hmm. this was the first year honestly where i was like whoa can i actually step back a little bit take take my foot off the gas a little bit in terms of my agent role and pump it up a little bit more with my coaching um, as I love coaching. Mm -hmm. So I'm not stopping anytime soon in terms of my role as an agent. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I haven't seen you slow down. No. <laughs> no, let's not get it twisted. Beating up as a coach, though. 100%. So on top of that, it's officially happening. Mm -hmm. um, I've been taking some time over the last three weeks to create a program which I call um, 100 mil in 100 days. 100 mil in 100 days is a program that I'm developing for agents who want to play this game of high level production yep. and understanding what it takes to close $100 million of real estate in 100 days. So that is the, the, the baseline of this program. I'm not gonna rush it, I'm gonna roll it out slowly, but stay tuned because I could I could release it this year. It might be in January, but stay tuned because I am releasing the official Case Academy 100 million in 100 days coaching program in the very near future here. Um, Not just for case agents no. or? No, no, no. Wow. Yeah. That's generous. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> That's it's gonna sick. be a lot of fun. Case Run Club number five. Tell me about it. This one is going to go off. We have Thanksgiving. We've got Christmas coming up. Yeah. We got to do something for the kids. So this is, will this be the last one of the year we do in December? I think we're going to try to squeeze one in in December. Okay. We'll see. Um, but this is going to be November the 18th and it's a toy drive. So we are mm. getting involved with every single small business surrounding us. Okay. Um, we want, we got to, we got to. We gotta get some kids. We gotta get some toys for the kids. Yeah. So That's cool. um, if you're a local business that would like to get involved with us, come through. We wanna create and generate as much kids, as much toys as possible for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, we're really close to solidifying a partnership deal with a friend of ours that belongs to some really rad charities for kids. Um, and so we're excited about this one. You know, it's always important that we give back to the community. And um, I can't wait to see what happens. But this one's November 18th, 7 a.m. at the office, toy drive, and 5K for the kids. So what do you have to do in order to You to just got to bring a toy. Okay. You got to come through. Cool. Bring yeah. a toy. I mean, new packaged. or used or? Eh, bring a new toy. New toy. You know? Cool. Just bring a new toy of some sort cool. so we could package this up yeah. and give it to the kids. 
November 18th. This one's going to be huge. We got Sweet. all kinds of crazy sponsors as usual. It is going to go off. Nice. Yeah, it's amazing. Can't fun. wait. All right, so let's talk about some life hacks. We've got on the agent side, right? We've got like one more month of production. If you're a real estate agent and you're living, you're, you're listening to this. Some people are already, some people are done already. Some people are already not, done, but, but if you're a not. A lot of people are. And if you're not in real estate, this philosophy will still ring true to you. You and I were talking about this before, mm-hmm. and it's that magic A word. Yep. If you want to turn up, if you want to go ham, if you want to elevate in this final few weeks of 2023, mm-hmm. what is that magic A word? Accountability. Accountability. I think first things first is make a decision. Mm. I think a lot of people, what I see is like, you know, you got two options. You can either commit to turning up or you can chill. Yeah. There's no wrong answer. Right. Like some people right. like holiday season, they just want to hey, chill. I chill. think the danger zone is when they're stuck in the middle mm. and then you didn't chill for the holidays mm. cuz you were like oh but I want to I want to turn up I want to work I want right. to grind I want to hustle and but in the times where you wish you would have hustled mm. it gets genuine like oh well, like I kind of just yeah. chilled I right. that temptation to chill so whichever one you choose commit to it and then accountability right. is the way you commit right. to it yeah that's good because I think a lot of people get stuck in that middle in Look. the holiday season I'm a huge fan at taking a break. I'm a huge fan For of sure. getting rest. In yeah. my older age now, it is so <laughs> difficult to get me to work on a Sunday. Yeah. I take that day of rest. Mm-hmm. I am so quick to take in a vacation if Alana wants to go somewhere random. I'm like, yes, let's go. Her uncle is developing this resort in the Philippines that is so cool. She was showing it to me, and I'm like, yo, let's go this weekend. Yeah. Right? I'm a huge fan of pumping the brakes and and recharging your batteries. But I'd say I'm a bigger fan <laughs> at going one freaking thousand yeah. while you're here. There is no time to play small. There is no time to waste. There is no time to be mediocre. You gotta go ham. Yeah. But here's the reality about going ham. You need help. Yeah. You need some sure. support. You yeah. need somebody looking over you when you're an independent to be like, yo, you stepping over what? Mm -hmm. So every single week, my whole crew, we set these goals and we set a vision. Every single Monday morning, we set the goals, we set a vision, and then we come up with all these actions, this many contacts, this Mm -hmm. many doors, this many posts, blah, blah, blah. Every single person on my team puts an accountability for, for what they will basically a consequence Mm -hmm. for what they have to do if they slip on any of these actions. That's why our group thread is lit. 4.45 in the morning, our group thread's lit because all these people commit to texting when they're up. Yep. And it's accountability. Left to our own free will, probably gonna gonna play kind of small. Yeah, and I think if you're scared of accountability, it's probably a good determining sign that you probably need it that you need it oh yeah and look it's up to here so here's our advice think about your goal Mm -hmm. number one number two think about the actions that you need to take that would guarantee you achieving your goal Mm -hmm. right number three what kind of accountability and consequence would get your ace on fire Mm -hmm. right so for example I generally commit to about seven actions a week. We have 12 people on the team. Every single action I miss, I have to pay everybody 1,200 bucks. Yeah. So seven times 1,200, yeah. if, I, if I just completely <laughs> bomb on all of them, it's very, very expensive. Yeah, it's bad. You'll be in trouble. And there's so many times that I know I would not push mm-hmm. if I did not set that in stone. And if I did not declare it to people like, yo, I'm going to do this. And if I don't do this, yeah, Justin, by the way, as soon as you get back from your trip, you owe me like 400 bucks, <laughs> Justin. I want my money, bro. Cut a check, fam. Cut a check, bro. I think, I think too. Hey, we're not gonna like... let, I'm not going to let <laughs> Justin back on this podcast until he pays me the money from that's his account- accountability. That's good that accountability. Though. That's what, that's what we that's ask That's what for. it is. And so here's a little trick with the accountability though, y'all. Do not have the person hold you accountable 
if you're also holding them accountable to something. Oh uh, yeah, it's, that's that's like having you ever, ever made a campfire and it's just like it's just like this. Yeah, I don't camp, but you and your stepdad probably have. <laughs> it's like it's very easy to follow. Yes, you know, like yes. you need a third. You need right. at least a yes. third. You need yeah. a third influence. Yes. is what I'm saying. Exactly. Because both will just crumble. Yes. So, so, and it just becomes this game of, hey, I won't call you on your BS if you don't call me on mine. Yeah, exactly. So just make sure you tell somebody random, hey, man, look, you care about me? Cool. Um, I'm going to drink a gallon of water every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to post blah, blah, blah every single day. I'm going to text you every morning at 445 from the freaking cold plunge. And if I don't, I'm going to, each thing I miss gets one like slit in my eyebrows, like vanilla ice yeah. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Kyle had a big old tattoo here. That was gnarly. Get real with your goals, y'all. Time is running out. Get serious. Get some accountability yeah, partners. In. Step it up. Let's go. Mm -hmm. That's all we got. That's it. That's it. Fire. Look, in case you missed it, thank you for tuning in. This was episode number 14. Yeah. Wow. Consistent. Hey, let us know if you guys uh, would like anything I'd like us to add anything to it next week we got this extra little piece that we're adding called questions are the answer yep so if you want to i think we could leave either um a way that you can leave a dm yes. if you want to call in hey look if you're one of the 340 people that listens to this every single week <laughs> send us a question or a dm yeah. we'll either have you call in or we'll just straight up answer your question on mm -hmm. the dm or it could be somebody that's actually in the office so Cool. Love y'all. Stay focused. Stay inspired. Talk to you soon.